This video provides operation guidance on the Eden IM patient monitors. Included with the monitors is a full patient accessory kit. The 3 lead ECG cable provides heart rate readings and an ECG waveform. Here we have the, the cable and the ECG is provided with the green lidded boxes so the waveform would be here and the heart rate would be here. In addition to the heart rate or ECG, the ECG cable also provides a respiration reading and respiration waveform, which is in yellow. The respiration is computed according to the patient chest expansion. If the leads are placed on the wrist of the patient, the monitor will be unable to provide a respiration reading, which will cause constant alarms. Thus, if the leads are not placed on the chest of the patient, and if they're placed on the wrist of the, of the patient, it'll be necessary to deactivate the respiration parameter to avoid constant alarms and notifications. Next, we have the SpO2 fingertip sensor, which provides a saturation or SpO2 percentage reading, a pulse rate reading, and an SpO2 waveform. The A standard cuff provides uh, NIVP readings. And finally, we have the temperature sensor. The, uh, this is a skin temp sensor, and it provides uh, temperatures from the skin or the surface of the patient. Simply place the metallic face of the sensor on the surface of the patient and place medical tape to keep it in place. The sensor uses a semiconductor to calculate the reading, so as a result, it'll take approximately five minutes before the monitor gives a stable reading. Uh, because the sampling methodology is external, readings will not be as precise when compared to an internal temperature sensor. A ground grounding cable is provided to buffer any artifacts caused by radio frequency interferences. In most instances, the interferences that occur will be reflected on the ECG waveform. So that's the purpose of this uh, yellow and green cable. The patient sensors connect on the left face of the monitor and the printer and battery compartment will be found on the right face of the monitor. And uh, next we can go over the, the keypad which provides essential commands starting with the power key to turn on or off the monitor. Next, we have the alarm key. Press the alarm key for a mute period of 120 seconds. Press it again to terminate any mute period. If you press and hold, the monitor provides a long-term muting period. So as you can see, there's no timer countdown and press it to terminate any mute uh, period. If any new alarm occurs during a mute period, the monitor will overwrite the mute command and commence triggering once again. So for example, if the SpO2 reading is too low and the monitor triggers an alarm, if you press the, the mute key, you'll be muting that alarm. But now if the heart rate also dips below the established limits, because this is a new event in addition to the previous one, the monitor will begin triggering and overwrite the mute, the mute command. Next we have the NIVP key. Press it to start a reading at any time and stop it to terminate or kill a reading. Next we have the trend table. If you press it, you'll populate the trend table on which you can review patient uh, monitoring history. So you can, through the interval setting, you can adjust the time frame or the spot reviews. So every second, every five minutes and so on. And you can use the toggle commands to navigate back in time or to uh, navigate forward. And you can press the, the menu key to close any window at any time to go back to the monitoring interface. Uh, the freeze key, you can press it to freeze the, the monitoring interface at any time. So for example, if there's an abnormal ECG waveform, you can press the freeze key to do some analysis or interpretation. 
press freeze once again to go back to real-time monitoring the record key you can use this key to record any parameter waveform so if you want to print the ECG or the SPO2 waveform you can press this key to automatically have the printer create a strip of that information and finally we have the menu to access the general setup of the monitor so you press the key to open up the menu and the same menu key can be used to close any window to go back to only the monitoring interface uh, the monitoring interface is designed to intuitively respond to user input uh, so for example to modify specific for parameter settings simply tap on the measurement tile of the specific parameter in question to open up those settings so for the illustration of these of this uh, video uh, I'll be setting up the ECG to provide the most conservative sampling setting available so again because I'm interested in the ECG I'll tap on the ECG measurement tile this populates the ECG setup All right so the filter filter setting this is how we can set or modify our filtering our sampling window there's three settings we have monitor which will give us the most neutral sampling window surgery will give us the most restrictive sampling window to compensate for patient movement or clinician movement during a procedure or surgery and we have diagnosis which will would give us the biggest sampling window to be able to pick up even the smallest uh, samples or signals from the patient cable so for illustration purposes I'll set it to surgery Uh, next, I'll navigate and select the ARR analysis. So I'll set the ARR analysis to off. Next, se select the ARR alarm setup and select the all row on the switch setting, set, uh, set it to off, and this will deactivate all. ARR or arrhythmia alarm events and uh, please note BFib and BTAX cannot be deactivated through the ARR alarm setup so we'll close this window next select the ST analysis and we'll set it to off to deactivate the ST analysis Now, to modify the alarm ranges, we'll press the alarm setup tab. To change the upper and lower limit of the ECG parameter, we select the alarm setup. And as you can see right here, we have the, the default settings are 120 as your upper limit and 50 as your lower limit. If you want to select or modify this these limits, select, for example, the upper limit. And once you select it, it'll be locked. And now we can use the knob to modify it. So for example, I'll set it to 140. All right, press the X. And now in the measurement tile, the limits are reflected as 140 and 50 with the lower, the lower limit. If we go back into the alarm setup, over to the right of the limits, we have three settings switch. If it's set to on, these limits are active. If it's set to off, they're deactivated and now they're grayed out because they're no longer uh, valid. And on the measurement tile, we have a red icon. It's a, a red bell with the next over it, which means that these ranges are not currently active. That's the icon which is alerting the clinician or the operator of this current setting. I will press menu. Oh, sorry. We select the ECG alarm setup and we'll switch it back on record if it's set to off if there's any alarm because they're the reading is outside of this range the machine will automatically record the information that's the purpose of the record option all right next we'll set the nivp to take a reading every five minutes automatically we tap on the nivp tile we have the nivp setup 
Measure mode currently it's set to manual, which means that the machine will take a reading only when we press the NIVP key. If we set it to auto and the interval, for example, five minutes, now the monitor, when we press the NIVP key, it'll take the first reading and then automatically every five minutes, it'll take an additional reading. The inflation mode, it's uh, best we set it to auto to avoid missing any measurements from patients with high BP. Okay, if we want to deactivate any parameters on the screen, so for example, right now we have temperature on the screen. If we don't care about temperature, if you want to deactivate it, the steps to make this change is press the menu key, select system setup, select module switch, and if the parameter has a check to the left of it, it'll be active on the monitoring screen. So we can see temp is checked. If we uncheck it, it'll be deactivated. So now the monitor refreshes and temp is no longer on the screen. And like I previously stated, the way to print out a strip of information is to press the record key. But as you can see, we have more than one waveform on the on the screen that's active so how do we control the content of that recording to to set it or modify it press the menu key select system setup recorder setup and for example the the monitor can print up to three waveforms at a time but if you want to keep it simple and very easy to read we'll set so that the monitor only prints the ecg so rec waveform one will set it to ecg two Waveform 3, we set it to or leave it at off. Waveform 3 is off. RT, record time, there's two settings, eight seconds, which means that if we press the record key, we get eight seconds of information and the monitor stops by itself. If we set it to continue, we'll press record, the monitor starts printing and it'll stop only after you press the record key again. So to avoid uh, wasting paper or erroneous printing, uh, we'll set it at eight seconds. The record interval, if we set it to off, only when we press the record key that we get one strip of ECG uh, recording. If we set it to, for example, 10 minute, we'll press the record key once, we get one strip of eight seconds, and then 10 minutes later, the machine will automatically record another strip of eight seconds. So if we set it to off, it's easier to control because only when we press the record key do we have a recording. Okay, so now we can close that out. So after we have all the settings, uh, the operation of the monitor is very simple. Simply connect your patient to the unit and the machine will start taking readings and sampling automatically. The only sole exception is the NIVP. After you have the patient, press the NIVP for the first reading and then from there it'll automatically start taking readings uh, by itself. So for the purpose of this video and illustration I'll put it in demo mode. Common function demo. So we have the monitor, It's we connect the patient, it's taking data we press the NIVP, it'll take the first reading, and then from there on out, it'll take the other readings by itself. Uh, if we want a recording of the EKG, press the record and you get the strip. And again, if you wanna change any particular settings of any target parameter, so for example, if we want uh, a pitch tone that's audible, we select, we focus on the pulse rate because that's what we care about, pulse rate volume, we can set the intensity very high. Press menu to close it. If we want to modify the intensity. It's the same sequence. Select the tile and change the pulse rate. And now we're set to go. So it's again, it's very simple. Connect your sensors, turn on the monitor, press the NIVP key. It'll take the first reading and then every reading from that point forward will be automatic. Uh, to review or review the history monitoring session, press the trend key and now we can view all the numerical information. We can toggle back to view the older data. Now when we turn off the monitor, you'll lose all that data. 
but if you want to go from one patient to the other one without turning off the monitor so we are going to need to clear the data the process or the steps are to press the menu key select patient setup if you want to enter the patient information such as the name date and so on you would select new patient if you want to only clear the session and you don't care about any patient information you just want to start a new session you press quick admit and you have to confirm yes because you're clearing the data from the previous patient you select your patient type adult pace this if the patient has a pacemaker off or on select yes and now we refresh the monitor to start a complete new session so you can see the operation is very simple and intuitive if there's any additional questions please call the Eden Tech Support Center which is uh, available at 858 750-3066, extension 2. Thank you.